if you found out when your last day on earth will be, whether it be in five years time or 10 years time, or even like you have a week left to live, how does your life look like now? How does it compare to the life you've always wanted to live? Or are you even remotely close to the life that you're living? Maybe you're on your way there and it's only a matter of time because you've already started to put work towards heading there, towards achieving that life. So I think that's one extreme example, I would say, into pushing somebody to actually do do something with their life. But if I were to put a Bruneian Muslim context into it, it can go either both ways. So the first would be if someone were to actually know when they would, let's say, die or when their last day on earth will be, it's they would either start to devote their life to God and detach themselves from earthly things that they cannot bring to their grave, okay? Um, They would start to pray more. They would start to build a relationship with God if they don't already have it. And they would start to let go of things and just focus on preparing themselves for the afterlife. Now, that's a realistic situation, right? But there's also another scenario where when someone realizes that they don't have that much time left, they would want to make the best out of their last days on earth. So they would actually maybe mend their relationships with family and friends or with their estranged, I don't know, like relative or something like that. They would start looking at their bucket list and want to tick off each and every single one of it because you just want to make the best out of the little time that you have. And I think people think they can only do either one. But for me, I personally think you can do both. You can start to prepare yourself for the afterlife, speaking as a Muslim. At the same time, you can still live your life. Like I said in the beginning, that's an extreme example of looking at the little time we have on earth. I'm getting somewhere with this, so bear with me. But first, hi, welcome back to another episode of Easy Does It With Me, Iskandar Karim. Thank you so much for being with me again this week. We're almost approaching Puasa, and I'm still deciding whether I should continue putting out episodes during Puasa or take a break um, and come back either during or after Raya. But let me think about it. Today, I want to talk about the deeper meaning of YOLO. Because we hear this a lot, okay? People saying YOLO. But what does it really mean? I'm pretty sure most of you know what it means, right? You only live once. I don't know if you've ever thought about it, but people use YOLO to do something or to decide on doing something menial. For example, okay, I wouldn't say I'm not like undermining or like making uh, or like saying like it's not a big deal or whatever. But for example... You and your friends go to high frequency. You haven't really properly like taken care of your diet. And you look at the menu, you contemplate whether you contemplate whether you should order the CSF one, French toast, because you worry about adding more calories or like you know how sweet um that is, but you also know how good it is. So you and your friend look at each other and be like, okay, YOLO, whatever, just order it. You know, you only live once. Another example would be um, if you are home and your friend takes you out and you tell them you don't feel like going out because you've already done your skincare routine and you're preparing yourself to go to sleep or you just prefer watching TV and then your friend says, oh, come on, yo, yo, lo, bro, you only live once. Why would you want to spend time in bed when you can go out and have fun, you know, live life. And then you start to think about it and be like, okay, that's not such a bad idea. You know, your friend's right. You only live once, so you should just go out. So those are like little small instances how the effect of YOLO can get your ass up and make you do something. So bigger picture, if we actually apply YOLO onto other aspects of our lives, do you think 
we would be living a much more purposeful, meaningful, and productive life because we understand the concept of we only have this one lifetime to live. Mind blowing, right? I've always thought about this, and and honestly, uh, understanding the concept of you only live once have more than once pushed me into doing things that most people are afraid of, like me quitting my day job or turning down a really good offer from a corporate job to do what I enjoy the most. Regardless of being in the same situation as some people are facing right now, I've always questioned um, and tried to understand what makes people submit to their fears and not do the things that they truly want to do, right? So I understand that fear and it is valid because it's more than just, for example, quitting your job and pursuing your passion, right? You have to take into consideration a lot of things, your loans if you have any if you're taking care of somebody you need to like really think about how you're gonna start financially provide for them and a lot of it have to do with financial reasons that stop someone from really pursuing what they do because maybe they're earning a really good salary at their current job and should they jump ship to start doing what they truly want to do, they might have to take a huge pay cut. Or even maybe to start doing what they want to do, they might have to sacrifice a few months or sometimes even years to finally earn some substantial amount of money to keep them afloat. But if one day that same person were to receive some... (laughs) I don't know, some bad news or one day maybe that person realized that, you know what, enough is enough. We only have this one lifetime to do this shit that we really want to do. Would they finally be able to get past their fears or acknowledge their fears and and just embrace it and start doing what they truly want to do? Do you think so? I honestly think so. Like, okay, sometimes... To do something really dramatic or to make such a dramatic decision in your life, you need to be dramatic too. So that's when I feel like you really need to stop worrying about the small details and look at the bigger picture. I'm not saying you should impulsively quit because the more you think about it, the more you're convinced that you shouldn't do it, right? But just take into consideration and take practical steps into really making a solid plan as to how you're gonna stop living this life that you're not happy with and just start living the life or making changes towards living the life that you truly want to do. What if you're in a sucky relationship and you're tolerating it because you feel like maybe you won't have the chance to meet someone else who wants to be in a relationship with you or who will love you the way they do, but you're not happy still with it. A lot of people stay in unhappy marriages because of religion and unpopular opinion. I just feel like you should prioritize your own happiness, not because of greed or with the intention of hurting your partner. But obviously, when you leave a relationship, one person or sometimes both people Um, will be hurt too. But I'm saying sometimes you just have to be delusional. So you have to make that dramatic choice to put yourself first because it's also sinful to be unhappy because it can take a, a toll on your mental health. I'm not sure if I'm just blabbering right now, but I'm just thinking of real life examples on why someone feels stuck and regardless of knowing how they feel about the situation that they're in, whether in a relationship with someone that they don't love or being in a relationship where they're unhappy or being in a job that is not fulfilling and it makes them depressed more than ever. I'm saying if 
these people understand that they only have one lifetime to live in this life, I think they would actually push themselves into getting themselves out of that situation. You know, so I think that's why people should actually start using YOLO, not just in like to do like small impulses like going out or ordering like five dessert, but also in bigger decisions like yeah switching jobs or quitting that job starting a business or finally leaving that abusive that that verbally abusive boyfriend or girlfriend that um overprotective annoyingly like clingy partner of yours and just finally realize your worth because i'm pretty sure that you're being put into this life to be happy and not be miserable you know and most of the times people are miserable because of their job and because of who they're with and also their situation in life like there are some people who are just unfortunate but i i don't want to sound like actually i don't care if this sounds privileged but i always believe that every single person in this life has a choice and if they can't see it then they need to do some inner work and just realize that they are probably seeing themselves as a victim and i pray that one day they're able to see that no matter how bad the situation that they're in there is a way out it made me think like it's true i don't know if it's god who put you in this lifetime that we're living in or you chose to be in this lifetime before you were born but i think that you should really really just open your eyes and like detach yourself from the little things that stop you from evolving yourself into someone who wants to do something of their life you know someone who has purpose and whenever i talk about purpose or whenever purpose is being discussed i feel like people always think of big purposes you know sometimes a person can just want the simple things in life and they already feel like they've found their purpose such as wanting to have a family then go have a family you know then start trying to look for someone who has the same purpose and then make babies and then live happily ever after but there's also someone who whose purpose is to tell stories and they just want to leave a mark in this world they want to be recognized so people think that's a bigger purpose but in actuality in my personal opinion any purpose is big whether it's easily attainable just because a lot of people do it or it seems impossible because only a certain few can do it whatever your purpose is i think you should be really honest with yourself and start working towards it because there's so many people who are still trying to find their purpose so those of you who know what you want to do then start putting in the work and start progressing your way towards that and those of you who don't know what your purpose is i feel like you just have to try different things to finally know what you want because it's way easier to find out what you don't want than to find out what you want in life so yeah i think honestly having a yolo attitude will help push you into progressing further in life and making hard decisions regardless of how difficult it is and the sacrifices that you have to make like for me when i turned down that offer uh from a corporate job i immediately acknowledge and understand that i have to put in the work to be consistent when it comes to my freelance work because that's my bread and butter i just have to trust in the universe also if you want to insert religion in any context that you're discussing right you also have to believe that allah is the best planner when i say to myself that divine timing is great or you have to trust in divine timing or you just have to trust in the universe most of the times it's me telling myself that allah is the best planner and he will always have your back so I think that's one way also to really just trust 
in yourself and in God so that you are able to make that big push in your life, whatever it is. I just want everyone to realize that you have a purpose. You are worth it. And don't spend most of your life just <laughs> feeling sorry for yourself or feeling hate towards somebody or feeling jealous of somebody. Focus on yourself. Okay, this is like so crazy for me to use this. But if, imagine if you have cancer and you find out you only have little time left. Would you stay in a sake relationship? Would you stay in a job you're unhappy with? Would you still bear ill feelings towards that person you've always hated? You won't, right? So all of these things are such a waste of time. As usual, I appreciate your company so much and I hope you feel the same way about me too. Thank you so much for listening. That's all I have for today. I hope this episode will start to inspire you to do something yeah let's start implementing yolo into our lives so that we can so we're more brave and we are more courageous to live our f life to the fullest yeah so thank you assalamualaikum and bye